All right, here we go. Transformations on square roots. It says here today you're going to be investigating transformations on the square root paired function. Now, yesterday what we did was we took a look at the quadratic function. And we found out that the inverse of that quadratic ends up giving us the top half of the parabola after we reflect it over the line y equals x. So what we're going to do today is take a closer look at just the square root parent function and what kind of transformations go on with that square root parent function. All right. So before we do that, though, you'll notice at the top of your paper there is a certain window they want it to be used. So what I need everyone to do is go to your calculator, go to window, and we need to adjust that window so that it matches up with what we see up here. So your x minimum, they want us to be using negative 9.4. The x maximum is positive 9.4, and the scale we're going to be using is 1. The y minimum is negative 6.2. The y maximum is positive 6.2, and the scale is 1. So make sure your window is adjusted appropriately so that the graphs that we get on the calculator match up with what we see on our page. We want to make sure we have the same window as what we see on our page. All right, so now that you've adjusted your window, what I need you guys to do is go ahead and go to y equals for me, and let's type in our square root parent function, which is the square root of x. So type in square root of x underneath y1. Square root of x. Go ahead and graph that. And you'll notice it's the same graph that we were looking at yesterday up at the top of your paper. This is the graph of our <coughs> square root parent function. Notice that it has an endpoint, and that endpoint on our parent function is at 0, 0, at the origin. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some other square root functions and see how they compare with our parent function. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that parent function in our calculator. I don't want you to delete it. Everything that we add is going to go into Y2. So everybody go to Y2 for me. In Y1, we're just going to leave the square root of X. But what I want you to do is when you go to y2, go to the far left, right next to the y2, go to the far left, and you see a little slash. What I want you to do is highlight that slash for me and hit enter just one time. And what happened to that little slash? It got thicker. It got darker, right? What we want to do is we want to make sure we can distinguish between the parent function and the new graph. So I want you to leave it so that it's a little bit darker than our parent function. That way it's easier to tell them apart. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do now is go to, go to Y2, go to Y2, and we're going to type in number one, which is this right here. We're going to type in the square root of X plus 3. Now I'm going to warn you guys, be very careful when you type that in. The plus 3 is on the outside of the square roots. So when you're typing this in, make sure you type in the square root of X, then hit your right arrow key after you type in X. So that you make sure that the plus 3 ends up on the outside. Okay. So put that in your calculator. Go ahead and hit graph. And if you type that in correctly, what you should be looking at is a graph that looks like this one I have on the board. Is that what you see on your calculator? No. All right. If you don't see that, then you didn't type it in correctly. You need to have the plus 3 on the outside of the square root. So go back. And make sure that the plus 3 is on the outside. It's very hard to tell because the little square root symbol is so close to the little line. So be very careful. All right. We're all good. Now notice this new graph that we have here is no longer has an endpoint at 0, 0. It's no longer at the origin. That endpoint is now right here. What is that order here? What is that endpoint now? 0, 3. So write that for me right here. 0, 3. Zero, 3. So what happened was we took this parent function, which is this one right here, and we did what to it to get it to its new point over here? We moved it up. How many did we move it up? Three units. So what we did was we took that graph and we just slide it up three units. So right down here at the bottom where it says, how does this function compare with our parent function? What we have here is a translated, or we translated the graph three units up. All we did was slide the graph up three units. We didn't change the shape of it. We just moved it up three units. Which is why the endpoint is no longer at zero zero. That's why it's at zero three. 
All right, so that takes care of number one. Now we're going to go to number two. So what I want you to do is go to your y equals again, and in y2, we're going to change that plus sign that you have into a minus sign. So now it's the square root of x minus 3. Go ahead and hit graph. You'll notice you have two graphs there. The first one you see is the parent function. The darker one that you see is the new graph, which should look like this right here. This is our new graph. Notice that it's also been moved. The endpoint is no longer at 0, 0. The endpoint is now down here at the bottom. So, Matthew, can you tell me what that endpoint is down? What's that order pair? What's that? All right, let me give you the order pair. You're right, it's at negative 3. But negative 3, 0, or 0, negative 3? There you go. 0, negative 3. So, that right there is the new endpoint. So, the question is how did we get there? How did we go from 0, 0? to 0, negative 3. What did we do to the graph? We took the graph and we just slide it down 3 units, right? So we call that a translation. So what we did was we translated the graph 3 units down. Again, we didn't change the shape. All we're doing is sliding it down 3 units. Slide it down 3 units. Alright, so the first one we moved it up three. Second one, we moved it down three. That's all we did. Plus three moves it up. Minus three moved it down. Let's take a look at number three. Number three. This time we got x plus three, but notice the x plus three is underneath the square root. So let's go to our y equals again. Go to y two. This time I want you to make sure that the plus three is underneath the square root. So type it so that x plus 3 is underneath the square root. And see what kind of graph you get. Alright, if you graph this correctly, this is what you should be looking at here. Graph should look something like that. Once again, just like 1 and 2, the endpoint is no longer at 0, 0. Our new endpoint is right over here. What is that new order pair? Negative 3, 0. So the question is, how did we get to negative 3, 0? What did we do to our parent function? What did we do, guys? Translated it 3 units to the left. We took the graph and we just slid it to the left. So I'll look at that. Both of them slide. Alright, so we're just sliding it over to the left 3 units. So that's what you're going to write for me right here. All we're doing is translating this three thing three units to the left. So adding three underneath the square root, move it three units to the left. All right, now let's do number four. Number four, the only difference is instead of a plus, we've got a minus. So go to Y2 and change your plus sign to a minus sign. So we should be, uh, we should have the square root of x minus 3 <coughs> underneath the square root. And let's see what the graph looks like this time. Alright, so this is the graph that we're getting. Just like all the others that we've seen, our endpoint is no longer at 0, 0. Our endpoint is now over here. Okay, what is that point? Where is the new end point? What's that order pair? 3, 0. That is correct. 3, 0. Right here. Alright, so again, how did we get to that 3, 0? What did we do to the graph? What did we do to the graph? Translate it. There you go. We translated this thing 3 units to the right. And again, translate just means that we're sliding it over. Is this not for maybe you guys? Where have we seen this before? Anybody remember where we've seen this before? Didn't we do this with our U shapes? Remember us doing this with the U shapes? As a matter of fact, if you look at the board over here, when we were going over those U shapes, I went ahead and put all the transformations up here. I said if we add or subtract inside the parentheses, we move sideways, left and right. If it's on the outside of the parentheses, we move the graph up and down. Well, we're doing the same thing here, guys. See number three and number four? 
Notice how the plus three and the minus three, rather than being inside the parentheses, it's inside the square root, which is why we're moving it left and right. If you go back and look at number one and number two, notice how the plus three and the minus three is on the outside, just like over here. So we're moving it up and down. So it's very, very, very similar to our quadratus. Okay, so we're going to move sideways if it's inside the square root, and we're going to move it up and down if it's on the outside of the square root. All right, let's go back. Uh, here we are, number five, the next page. The next page. Now, number five, you'll notice this time we have the square root of x plus four plus two. So we need to be very careful when we type this in our calculator, guys. Go to your calculators. Now, you'll notice they use parentheses in their equation, and it's really not necessary when we type in the calculator, but you do need to make sure that the plus four is inside the square root, and you need to make sure that the plus two is on the outside of the square root. So be very careful how you type that in. In order to get to the outside, you're going to have to hit the right arrow to get it correct. correct. All right, so let's make sure everybody's getting the correct graph. This is what you should be looking at on your calculator. If you don't see that, it means you typed it in incorrect. So just like the first four that we looked at, obviously you can see there that the end point is no longer at 0, 0. The end point is now right over here. What is that new end point? Negative 4, positive 2. That is our new end point. Negative 4, positive 2. The question is, how did we get it? What did we do to our parent function right here? Actually, we did two things to our parent function. What did we do out then? All right, we moved it to the left 4. So we took the graph, moved it to the left 4. But then we also moved it up 2 units. That's how we got it. So we're going to write that down at the bottom. It says, how does the function compare to the parent function? Well, we translated it to the left four units, and we also moved it up two units. That's how we got it. So two different transformations. Left four, up two. That's why the endpoint is now at negative four, positive two. Number six, very similar to number five. Here we got the square root of x minus two. Minus 1. So go ahead and put that in your calculator. Let's see what we get here. Make sure this is, uh, or the minus 2 is on the inside of the square root. Make sure that the minus 1 is on the outside of the square root. Very important. We'll be careful how we type it in. Again, if you graph this or put it in correctly, this is the graph you should be looking at here. Just like all the others, the endpoint is no longer at 0, 0. Our new endpoint is right here. question is, what is that endpoint? Where is Felix? What is that endpoint? 2, two negative 1. So write that down. 2, negative 1. The question is, how the heck did we get to that 2, negative 1? What did we do to our parent function? Well, again, two different things we did to our parent function. We took the graph, we moved it to the right two, but we also moved it down one. So that's what we want to say down there, where it says, how does the function compare to our parent function? We took it, we moved it to the right two, and down one. Translated it to the right two, down one. I just noticed this. And this says, and up, down, it should be. Down. down one. Doesn't do both. Just one. Down. <laughs> All right, before we go on to number seven and eight, I want to point out something just in case you haven't noticed it yourself. Notice right here, I want you to look very closely at the endpoints. Here's the endpoint for number five. Look at the endpoint on number six. And I want you to compare those endpoints with the actual equation itself. So look here. And look at the equation. Look at the endpoint. Look at the equation. Look at the endpoint. Look at the equation. Are y'all noticing anything about the endpoint and the equation itself? Notice anything? 
Okay, whatever's in the square root switch, or you notice about the number on the outside of the square root, it stays the same. So, basically what we found out here is, in order to find the endpoints, do we really have to graph it to find the endpoint? No, not really. All you got to do is look at the numbers inside and outside the square root. So, for example, if I were to give you this equation, and I ask you, what's the endpoint? Do you really need to graph it to find the endpoint? No. What would be the endpoint for that equation? 99 and 64. 99, opposite of the negative 99, and 64, of course, being the, the same. So again, you don't have to graph it necessarily to find the endpoint. As a matter of fact, if you go back to the ones that we've done before, you'll notice right here, the endpoint was negative 3, 0. Negative 3 is the opposite of positive 3. We had nothing on the outside of the square root, which is why we're using a 0. Over here we had negative 3. The opposite of negative 3 was positive 3. Nothing outside the square root, which is why we use a 0. Let's go even further back. Look at this one. Nothing underneath the square root, which is why we had 0. Plus 3 was on the outside of the square root, which is why we have a 3 here. Here, nothing else inside the square root, which is why we got a 0. Minus 3 on the outside, which is why we got the negative 3. What's the endpoint for our parent function? 0, 0. We got nothing inside or outside the square root, which is why we have the order pair 0, 0. Okay, we're clear on that? All right, let's go back. Here we are. We're looking at number 7 and 8. Number 7, this time what we're going to do is instead of adding or subtracting, now we're going to be looking at multiplication. So go to your calculators box. And let's go to y equals. And in y2, I want you to type in for me 2.5 square root of x. 2.5 square root of x. And correct. Is that the graph you get? That is the graph you get. Where is the endpoint on that graph? Zero, zero. So notice it's the same as our parent function, which makes sense because I just told you there's nothing underneath the square root, there's nothing outside the square root, so that's why we got an endpoint of zero, zero. However, the graph is different from the parent function. And you see how, what kind of transformation did that 2.5 perform on that parent function? What is the 2.5 doing? I'll give you a hint. It's over here on the board. What's that? Okay, be more specific. When you say straight, what kind of straight? You got this way. Vertical. What we're doing here is we're vertically stretching this parent function. As a matter of fact, we're stretching it by a scale factor of 2.5. So it's just like the parabolas. Remember we stretched the parabolas and it made it look skinnier? Well, we're doing the same thing with our square roots. We're stretching it. We're pulling it like a rubber band, which is why it's looking like this right here. Now, just like the parabolas, the bigger that number is, the more you stretch. The bigger the number is, the more you stretch. So on this one, we didn't move left, we didn't move right, we didn't move up, we didn't move down. All we did was stretch it out. So look at number eight. Go to your calculator and type in 0.6. Square root of x. Let's see what this one does. 0.6. Here's the graph we're getting. You haven't figured it out already. Notice how the endpoint should be at 0, 0. What is the 0.6 doing to our graph? What's that? A vertical. A vertical. There you go, that's the word. Vertical compression. We're squeezing it down. Like somebody's coming over there and stepping on that thing. And we can say more specifically that we're compressing it vertically by a scale factor of 0 0.6. 0 0.6. That's how much we're compressing. So again, guys, notice how all of this kind of ties into those uh, Transformation we talked about in our quadratics. Everything that we talked about in quadratics is applying here to our square root function. 
When we multiplied the uh, quadratic by a number, we stretched it out. When it was a number between a 0 and 1, we compressed it. So all those things are coming back around here. All right, two more to look at. Let's take a look at negative square root of x. Negative square root of x. Put that in your calculator. See what it looks like. Negative square root of x. There's your graph of negative square root of x. Notice your endpoint is still at 0, 0. But what is the negative sign going to our graph? There you go. It's reflecting. It's reflecting it over the x-axis, which is exactly what happens in our quadratic. Anytime we have a negative sign in front of our quadratic, that's what we have happen also, is our reflection. And the last one over there, number 10, we got negative 2. Negative 2 square root of x. Let's see what the graph of negative 2 square root of x looks like. Negative 2 square root of x kind of looks like number 9, but it is slightly different. It's a little bit different. The end point is at 0, 0. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a difference between 9 and 10. Can you see what's happening on number 10 there? Okay, not only is it being reflected like number 9, but it's also getting stretched, all right? So that's what's happening on number 10. And the reason it's being reflected is because of the negative sign. The reason it's being stretched is because of the 2. So the negative does one thing, the 2 does another. Negative gives us the reflection, the 2 gives us the vertical stretch. So two things that happen on that. So these are some examples of our transformations as they apply to our square roots. So really I didn't give you any new information because all of these transformations we talked about before. All we did today was apply them to our square roots. They're the same thing as our uh, quadrats. So let's go ahead and summarize what we found out here. This right here is going to be the basic or general form of our square root function. We're going to take a look at what a does, what h does, and what k does to our square root function, starting with a. A, notice how the a is on the outside of the square root. So when we multiply on the outside of our square root, when we multiply on the outside of our square root, it's going to do something to the graph. And it's all going to depend on what that number is. So let's start with if it's a number greater than 1. If we have a number greater than 1, what is it going to do to the graph? It's going to vertically stretch. So the first line here should be stretch. We're going to stretch it out if it's a number like a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6. The bigger that number is, the more we're going to stretch it. But what if that number is a number between 0 and 1? Like we saw one earlier, 0 0.6. What did that 0 0.6 do to the graph? Compress it. Okay, so this is going to be a vertical. Shrink is what they call it, but it's the same thing. Vertical compress. Vertical compress. And the last one down there, if A is less than 0. In other words, if it's a negative number. What happens if that is a negative number? It reflects over the x-axis. Reflects over the x-axis. So these are some transformations that are going to occur depending on what that A is. Now let's come over and look at the K. Notice the K is on the outside of the square root. So when we're adding on the outside of our square root, what's going to happen? Well, it depends. If you add, you do one thing. If you subtract, you do something else. So if we look at the first one here, it says if we're on the outside and you add in that K, it's going to translate the graph square. If we add up, if it's on the outside and we add, we're going to move it up. What if you subtract? Down. So when subtracting K, we're going to translate the graph down. Translate the graph down. Cool. 
And finally, H. H is on the inside of our square roots. Inside. If we add, we do one thing. If we subtract, we do something else. Uh, let's start with adding. Adding H translates the graph to the left. And subtracting H is going to translate the graph to the right. Which again, like I said, this is very, very similar to what we did with our quadratics. All right, so these are the uh, transformations that are going to go on within our square roots. Now, we can also work backwards here. Early on, the 10 examples that we did, you were given the graph, and then you had to describe what kind of transformation occurred. But what if... What if I give you the graph and ask you to give me the equation, the rule? Well, we can do that, right? <coughs> if you look at the first one here, of course, the dotted line represents our parent function. The solid one is the new graph. And to get that new graph, they said they reflected it over the x-axis, and they also translated it five units up. So if they did those two things, what would the equation be? Write it down for me on your paper. What's the equation if we were to take the parent function and reflect it over the x-axis and translate it five units up. What is it going to look like? Write it on your paper. Make sure it says y equals something. That's what it equals. Y equals what? Think about what, what you need to get a reflection. Think about what you need to move the graph up five. All right, Garrett, you got an equation? What you got? All right, now that plus 5 you're talking about, is it inside or outside of the square root? Outside. Let's see. Is that the same thing I got here? Yep. Y equals negative square root of X plus 5. Notice again that the plus 5 is on the outside. That's what moves the graph up. Of course, the negative in front there is what gives us the reflection. All right, do the same thing for me on B. They tell you that we're stretching it so that it's twice as tall. Keyword there is twice. Then we're going to translate it three units to the left. So what would the equation look like to stretch it so that it's twice as tall and so that we would move it three units to the left? Right equation. All right, let's see how you did on this one. Regine, what did you get for your equation? Nothing. Nothing. All right, stretching. If you want to stretch it, vertical stretch. In this case, we're stretching it so that it's twice as tall. That's going to go in front of the square root. What number are you talking about going in front of the square root? Two. So there should be a two in front of the square root of x. Uh, what about if we want to move it to the left? Let's look over here. I want to move to the left three units. So what do I need to have? Plus three. Inside or outside the square root? Inside. The inside. So here is the equation we should have. Y equals two square root of x plus three. Now, if you didn't put your parentheses, that's okay. That's not a big deal, but you do have to have a plus three underneath the square root. All right, we're good. That takes care of our... No. Any questions? Do not put this away. Go ahead and keep this out. You may need it here in a second. All right, here's what I need you guys to do. Your remotes. Go ahead and pull those out. I need you to get on. Turn them on. Get your remote. Turn them on. And for most of you guys, it's going to say join algebra. If it says join algebra, go ahead and join algebra. Um, if it needs to search for a class, go ahead and do a search for the class. But we do need to join out. In order to sign in, remember, you're going to have to use that number that you got at the beginning of class. For all of us, it's 400 and something. Just type in that number, 400 and something. 
If you type in the correct number, you should see your name on your remote. If you don't see your name on the remote, make sure you hit no and try it again. If it's your name, put yes. Everybody got their name signed in? Everybody signed in. Now you'll notice there you see there's only five questions. We're going to take a little quiz here, guys. This is going to go into great. There's five questions, but that means they're how much a piece? 20. 20 points a piece. So we can't miss too many here. Uh, still have a passing grade. So make sure you don't miss any questions. Now, right now you can't answer the question because you don't know what the questions are. And we're going to be going over that here in a second. I do want to show, tell you guys that you're not going to see which ones are right or wrong until you finish the quiz complete. So when you answer all five questions and you hit finish, then you'll see which ones you got right and wrong. So don't, you're not going to see anything as you're going through here. Okay? All right, so let's get started here. As I said, there's only five questions. This is the first one. They're all multiple choice, by the way. First one. Which equation best describes the red graph? I can tell you the purple one is the parent function. So the red one. Which one of those equations describes the red graph? Now remember, you can use your calculators, you can use your, uh, your notes, whatever it takes, except you cannot ask your buddy sitting next to you. Which of those equations describes the red graph? Now you can see down here, we've got 11 people that are taking this quiz. Right now we have five people that have answered, six people that have answered. We're waiting on a few more here. By the way, if you make a mistake and you accidentally type in the wrong number or the wrong letter, you can always hit delete and change your answer. You can always change your answer until you get finished. Once you get finished, there's no changing answers. Okay, we're we'll just waiting on two more to answer the question. Give you about another 30 seconds to answer the question. Which of those equations describes red graph? Okay, can't take too long there, so I'm going to move on to the next one. So if you haven't answered it, you can still answer it, but the rest of us need to move on. All right, number two. Same thing. Which of these equations describes the red graph? Remember, the purple one represents the parent function. Which one of those equations is the red one? Which equation would describe the red graph? All right, let's move on to number three. Number three, a little different here. Number three, what is the endpoint for the graph of y equals the square root of x plus 7 minus 9? Which one of those would be the endpoint? Remember, we said we could tell what the endpoint is by looking at the equation. We didn't need to necessarily practice. What's the endpoint? If you don't remember that little rule, there's a trick. You can always graph it and see what the endpoint is that way as well. Okay, number four. Which equation has the following transformation? Which one of those has a reflection over the x-axis, translates three units to the right, and two units up? Which of those would be reflected over the x-axis, translated three units to the right, and two units up? Thank you. 
Flexion over the x-axis, three units to the right, two units up. All right, last one here. Last question. Which is the graph of y equals negative square root of x minus 6? Which one of those would be the graph of y equals negative square root of x minus 6? A is not here, and then B, C, and D are graphs. So if you get a graph that's not up there, you can select A. Now, once you answer number five and you're happy with all of your answers and you're comfortable, then you can hit finish. Once you hit finish, then you'll see which ones are right, which ones are wrong. But it's not until you hit finish that you'll actually see which ones. Okay. All right, so remember, there are, there are 20 points of peace. Yeah, we still got two more people there working. Hold on. We're going to take a look here and see which, which one we had trouble with. We're just waiting for one more person. Yes, hit finish once you've answered all the questions. Okay, did everybody hit finish? Did everybody hit finish? Because I'm going to stop the quiz, and if you haven't hit finish yet, you're going to end up with a zero instead. So, is there anyone that hasn't hit finish? How about everyone hit two and three? Well, we're going to take a look here. Everybody you did it on purpose. I might have. I don't know. We got it. Everybody finished. We were right. We're all good. I'm going to stop it. And let's see how we did here. This right here tells me how we did on this particular question. Now, on this one, what was the correct answer here? The correct answer should have been D. So, 72% of us got it correct. Which not too bad. I would have hoped for a little bit better, but not too bad. 72%. Uh, the rest of us put A, not here, 27%. Mm -hmm. But the right answer was D. Uh, this one over here. All of us got that one right. We're good on uh, number four. Didn't have any trouble with that one. All right. Whoa. What happened on this one here? All right. This one you were asked to find the endpoints. And the endpoints should have been what? A, negative 7, negative 9. Uh, so actually, when I type this in, I put in the wrong answer. So those of you that answered A, which it looked like 90% of you did that, you are correct. All right. So this one person that put B is incorrect. Oh, that was me. All right. So negative seven, negative nine is the correct answer. So you didn't miss it. Uh, number two. Oh my God. Which equation best describes the red graph? Oh, 100% on that one. Nobody missed that one. We did good there. On number two, it says it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But it says it's right here. So when I got it in my grade book, it's, it's counting it right. Uh, so I don't know why it's counting it wrong. Uh, let's see here. D, yeah. Should be D. That's what y'all typed in, D? And this one, we did the same thing. Yeah, I got 100%. I didn't count that one on Monday. All right, so we're good there. So, we all passed it, right? Most of us did. I remember that one, number three, I think it was. You do get credit for that. All right, go ahead and turn off your remotes for me.